Hi everyone. Welcome back to The Crafty Author. My name is Anissa and I am The Crafty Author. And this is our daily sew along and uh, <clears throat> I hope you're all doing well. Um, I've been battling a migraine all day so we are going to cut this short this evening. And um, Ma'am, I'm telling you, and it's because the weather has changed. So, I have really bad allergies, and I also get migraines. So, <laughs> the barometric pressure has changed, and of course, I'm having some kind of a an effect. I woke up with it, and so it has just been kind of one of those days. However, I did want to share with you, well, maybe I should wait until more people jump on. Um, cause you're all going to want to hear about this. Um, hi, is that pronounced Sanita? And thank you. Did I, did I pronounce that right? I hope so. Hi, Candy. Hi, Tammy. Oh, yay. I said it right. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Um, I wanted to tell you, so that picture that my friend was looking for last night of my glamour shot, <laughs> it's actually the thumbnail for this video. So um, if you haven't seen it yet, you can, when you leave, you can see it. Oh, my gosh. It's crazy. It's a, it's me and my daughter. My daughter was really little. Hi, Gwen. Um, she was really little when that, uh, God, how old was she? I want to say she was like four, maybe five. So funny. I had a funny story about my daughter when she was little. Her hair was like fuzz. It just like it just didn't grow, you know? It was just like this she was really blonde, like towhead blonde. Sanita, I am in Denver, Colorado and it is snowing. It's cold. <laughs> Where are you at? Um and so anyway, she, her hair was like fuzz and I don't know why, but for years I thought, oh my gosh, this girl is never going to have any hair. And then when she turned like 12, all of a sudden she, all that like baby fuzz hair that she had up until that point, like turned into all this really, really super thick, thick, thick hair. And now the girl has just got hair like you wouldn't believe. I'm so jealous. Yeah, it was, it's crazy. Oh, in Michigan. Well, guess what? There's going to be snow and cold coming your way. <laughs> I'm really sorry. <laughs> but it's supposed to be, I think, kind of crappy here until next Tuesday. But we'll see. The weather here in Colorado changes all the time. So you just never, never know. Um. Anyway, I wanted to tell you all, since I had this migraine today and I just, basically laid down and died on my couch um I watched the tiger king <laughs> oh my gosh the tiger king okay so here are my thoughts on the tiger king um it's a complete train wreck uh Oh, awesome. 85 degrees. That's terrific. Um, it was a really, it was really good. Actually, actually, it was really good. Oh, that Carol Baskin. <laughs> oh you guys, if you have not seen the Tiger King, you must watch it. Um, you will have a lot of what the, what moments. Um, you will have a lot of what did I just see? Uh, what did I just hear? Is that for real? You'll have those kinds of moments. Um, it's kind of sad. Yeah, I actually, it's, it's very sad. Not in the aspect of while you're watching it, you're going to sit down and you're going to just cry. Um, 
but you will, your heart will break a little bit. It's kind of sad. There's six episodes of it. I believe each one is about an hour long. I started watching it last night. So I watched the first two shows and thank you. And, um, yeah, it was, it was crazy. It was crazy. So now I can say that I've watched it. I've watched, I've watched all the episodes. Um, it's on Netflix and, um, wow. It's called the Tiger King. So they raise these baby, they, they raise tigers, baby tiger cubs and tigers. So like, um, they had these zoos down in Florida, petting zoos, where they let people, yes, Tiger King, where they let people interact with the tigers and the lions and stuff like that. It's it's a story about that. It's actually, a, the story is about the Tiger King, and I can't remember his name. You'd think I would remember it after watching it for, you know, an entire day. Um, I don't know why I don't remember his name. Anyway, he has a mullet, <laughs> just awesome. Oh my God, I haven't had a mullet since junior high. I haven't seen a guy with a mullet since junior high. It was fantastic. He looks like Joe Dirt. If you've ever seen the movie Joe Dirt, he kind of looks like Joe Dirt. Um, wow, it's crazy. It is crazy. Those people in that world are nuts, and um. It was really interesting because we have a wild animal sanctuary here in Colorado, actually, just kind of up the highway from us here. And I think I read that we have two of the bears and some of the tigers that he had. So they have them up here. Now, the wild animal sanctuary here in Colorado is, I've heard, is really, really awesome. I've not been there, but my neighbor has. And... Um, the animals have like a lot of room to roam. They have acres and acres and acres of room to roam. So they're not like, they're not locked in tiny cages, you know. I'm, ugh, there's nothing worse than seeing wild animals that should be free, seriously. Um, but anyway, so that's, it's just, it's crazy. So you need to watch it, okay. I will warn you, it's got a lot of foul language in it and it has, um, the content is a little bit, if you're offended real easily, you're probably not going to like this show. But if you, if that kind of stuff doesn't bother you, then you'll, you'll be fine. But like if you, if swearing is really offensive to you, then you, you won't like it at all. So, so avoid it. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. Yeah, Joe Exotic. Thank you, Jackie. Nailed it. <laughs> yeah, he was, uh, wow. Uh, it's just a, yeah, it's a series. It's like just a TV series, I think, or just a, like a documentary that they did. Um, there's six episodes of it, and then it, then it like, ends. I don't know if there's going to be more or not. I don't see how there really can be. Um, because of the way they ended it. Um, I, I don't know. The only other way that there could be more coming is if the other people who are involved. I don't want to give it away. I don't want to give it away. <laughs> I don't I don't know that there's another. I don't know that there's another um, show after it unless other people get busted. I'll just put it that way. So, hi, Beatrice. So, moral of the story is don't breed tiger cubs and sell them. Who ever thinks to do that? Like, I was watching that and I'm like, oh my gosh. Like, I would never, like, that thought would never cross my mind, you know? I will tell you this, though, in watching that, it made me think of something. When I was a little girl and... My sister was a little girl. We were at the mall and there was this place inside the mall because they used to have these all the time. Um, 
where they had like a petting zoo and you could actually hold and get your picture taken with a baby lion. And so my sister and I did, oh, I think I was like 12. And um, I still have the picture. I would really have to dig for it because it's in a box somewhere. Um, but that, I all I remember is that lion's paw, even as a baby. I mean, that thing was like this big. It was so cute. But its paw was as big as my face. And um, I mean, it was fine. The little cub was nice, you know, but I didn't think, oh, I want to take this home. How cute. <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh my gosh, people are crazy, I'm just saying, so, all right, Sunita, we'll see you in a few seconds, um, like I said, I don't know if you heard me before, uh, the thumbnail on tonight's video is the glamour shot that Jeremy was talking about last night, where he did the makeup for that, so, I'm going to leave that up there. <laughs> I'm feeling a little goofy. <laughs> and do you know what tomorrow is? I'm excited. Tomorrow, I almost forgot. I almost forgot, you guys, until I looked at my planner. It's block of the month. It's the actual block of the month. And do you know what? I'm going to be blatantly honest with you here. I don't know what it is. So it will be a surprise for all of us. Um, and I will have to get that done in the morning and then up on the video. Uh, ah, thank you, Jackie. And oh, a docudrama. That's what that's called. Okay. Um, so I will get that up. I'm not sure if I will be coming live tomorrow night. I'm going to try. Um, but usually when I do filming on a Friday, I have to spend some time editing and get everything up and ready to go. And to be honest, it takes a while. So if you don't see me on here at five o'clock tomorrow night, you can assume that we're not having the live. Okay. Um, just because it's hard to, it's really hard to, to video, edit, upload, and then video again. So I'm just, I'm just being honest, guys. I'm just one person, okay? Oh, you got into another quilt. Fun stuff. Um, I still have quilts on the wall that need to be finished. Does anybody want to come finish them for me? <laughs> Good grief. I talk about those quilts all the time. The one has been on my wall, I think, probably since before Christmas. Actually, I know before Christmas. And then um, the baby quilt that I made out of February's block of the month. That one is still hanging on the wall. I still, I cut the batting. I just need to do the backing. Haven't done that yet. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing, guys. Rambling. Sometimes I just don't have my mojo. You know, sometimes I think we just get so busy and caught up with other things in life that... We just don't have the mojo to do some of the things we should do. I'm in one of those moods. I'm kind of in a funk, I think, today. And, um, yeah. So, I didn't, I, I've had a terrific day other than the fact that I've had this migraine. But other than that, I mean, it hasn't been, like, a bad day, you know. So, I can't really complain. Life was really good, you know. Um, so... I don't know. I was talking to Jeremy last night, and he is thinking about uh, starting his own YouTube channel. And I told him that he should, because Jeremy is a makeup artist, and he's a really good makeup artist. Yeah, I'm wiped out. <laughs> Candy, I'm so wiped out. <laughs> I am telling you, and I have taken so much ibuprofen today I'm just like I know my stomach is just gonna go crazy you know um but oh trying to figure out a layout well hey if you need some help Gwen um go into the group the Facebook group my fi private Facebook 
Facebook group, The Crafty Author, and ask for some help if you need some help with um, different variations. Everybody in there is really helpful. So, you know, I, I try to be in there as much as I can. Sometimes I can't just because I'm, you know, I'm doing lots of other things too. So, but I do pop in there and I read stuff. I don't always get notified of everything. That's, it drives me crazy. Um, so I don't know. Either that or my notifications get pushed all the way down to the bottom and then I just don't see, I don't see anything. So I do check notifications. I check here on YouTube as well. And sometimes YouTube, like I had comments that I was going to go and reply to and the other day YouTube had a glitch and they went in and it like erased all the comments. I don't know. <laughs> Their analytics wasn't working and... They must have did a reboot or something because it just took everything out. And then I was like, where are my comments? And I couldn't see them. So, you know, some things are out of our control there too. So, um, anyway, I did want to kind of show you guys some stuff that, you know, because now that I have all of these all pressed out, there's more in my bucket. But, um... I like to use a square to square up these little tri these squares before I sew them together and start making the points for the star. So I think you guys have seen me probably do this a gazillion times. I will be honest, every time, because I don't do these points a lot, um, every time I make a new one, I have to try and remember how did I do this, where did I line this up, do I have the measurement right? <laughs> right so if you yourself struggle with that I just want you to know it's perfectly normal <laughs> Gosh. you would think I would remember it every time but I don't um so anyway we're going to be cutting this one I believe down to three and a half inches sound like somebody slammed the door um so we're going to be doing the three and a half inch mark. I like this because I can look at it on this little, oh, sorry, look at it on the little square. It's kind of marked and it just, doop, the doop. So I'm going to start cutting some of these so you guys can watch. You're not going to be able to see my face. I know I'm sorry, but maybe I, maybe I'll stop. I'll probably just do a few of them and um, show you so that you kind of get the whole idea. I have another one, another square. This is my, I call this my filthy square. <laughs> I, it's hard. It's like, I always have to stop and think. I'm like, wait, how did I do that? And then, and then I figure it out and I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. Uh, Sanita, I am making a sawtooth star quilt. So it's a sew along and it's a free pattern. And so if you are interested in making the same quilt with us, sewing along, the directions are free. This pattern is free on my website. I've done all the measurements out for you to make a 12 inch sawtooth star block um, at craftyauthor.com. Thank you. And then if you just click on the little tab up at the top that says blog, you will see, you'll see this right here. So, and you can print this off. It's in PDF form on there and all the directions are there as well. So, all right. So I am going to show you how to do this. Now, I prefer when I'm working with little tiny squares like this, okay, to have a mat that rotates. If you don't have one, it's fine. Um, but it does make it a little more, yes, exactly. Um, so, and I just like for this, for me, I just pulled fabric off my, off my, out of my stash and I just cut. I used less than, what was it? You guys watched me cut it. I used less than, I think, like a half a yard. Um, what was I saying? Um, rotary mat. 
if you don't have one, you might want to invest in one. If you're gonna be doing a lot of this, if you're gonna work with squares a lot, especially if they're gonna be 10 inches or smaller and you're gonna to need to be trimming and stuff, these come in real handy. Um, you can do it on your other mat. People flip their mats and they cut them. People flip the fabric. But I just find that when you move your fabric around sometimes, you can really mess it up or stretch it if it's on a bias. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yes, I love mine too, Sunita. They're expensive. This one was expensive. Um, but you can actually, I have seen them on Amazon. They have come down in price so much, you guys. So now is probably the time to pick one up, especially if you're going to be doing a lot of sewing. Okay. All right. So let's see if I can remember how to do this, shall we? Because I'm not certain that I do. All right. I'm going to push the camera down a little bit. So if you get dizzy, close your eyes. It's gonna only be that way for a couple seconds and then we're gonna be good to go. Just dropping that camera down. And, all right. So I'm not using the fancy camera, I'm using my phone. <laughs> okay, so just gonna, I have to work with this. Hi, Joyce. Welcome. Florida. Is it warm down there today? I need a beach. I need this to be over so I can go to the beach. All right. Yes. So I like to use... Oh, how nice. Oh, my gosh. It's snowing here, Joyce. I'm in Denver, and it's snowing. <laughs> All right. I line my seam this middle part right here. I stick this little line that's on my square right in the center of that seam. I hope you guys can see this. Can everybody see what I'm doing okay? I can never quite tell because and I don't know if I can bring it any closer. Maybe that. Yes. Okay, good. Thanks, Beatrice. Thank you. All right. So I've got my line lined up here. And I'm going to cut three and a half. All right. Thank you. You don't miss it. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, I don't blame you. It's kind of crazy here now. It used to be a really nice little town, but... Uh, gotten pretty populated real quickly. I'd like to move to Hawaii, but my grandbabies and my kids are here, so. All right, so here we go. So I'm lined up on this line here, and I'm going to line up on the three and a half inch here. Okay, and I'm also going to line up on the three and a half inch line here. And I'm not doing a very good job. Hi. Right. Might wanna make sure my lines are straight. It's, it's better if you're lined up straight on a line. You don't really feel like I was lined up very well. So this is what I'm talking about. It takes me a while to do this because I feel like I have to really pay attention to what I'm doing. And now I'm lined up. So I'm lined up on this three and a half inch line and this three and a half inch line. So now I can take this, put my hand down without trying to move it because I always like to move it and I'm going to cut this part off. Okay. And that cuts off those dog ears. So I don't worry about trimming off the dog ears on these right now because I'm trimming them as I'm going, okay? So now I'm going to turn this mat one, two times. I pull this one off 
And I'm gonna find that three and a half inch mark again on both here. And I am just going to trim whatever the excess is here. And I just had a little tiny bit plus the dog ear right there. Okay. Easy peasy, right? So now we have a perfect three and a half inch square. All right, next one. And again, I would try and keep these together so that we don't have um because you don't want to mix them up you want when you go to sew them you want them to kind of be the same here oh that one's lining up real nice wow imagine that you know i do so many cuts with three and a half inches i should just mark a big black line on my ruler so i just know where to line up automatically all right we're gonna twist one, two. We're gonna do the same thing. Just line it up. Oh, now this one I might not have done. Oh yeah, I did. I did. I did it right. Trust yourself. Remember, I always say that. Just trust yourself. And then I'm sitting there going, huh, did I do it right? And now these should be, boom, perfect. So these two pieces are now ready to be sewn together. So I would just take these two. Remember, I always do this backwards, right? I would take these two pieces. Now sew them straight together, and then I have that, my star point. Easy peasy. So I'll do that a few more times, and you guys can see what, how I'm doing this. Actually, believe it or not, I get asked how to do this a lot, because I think, I think it is kind of tricky. And the math in doing it is kind of tricky. What's tricky is trying to trim up, um, like, pinwheels. Because you have to do the math on the pinwheel. Because if you cut it wrong, or even like these, if you cut them wrong, you will have a section that is bigger. I wish I had a, an example. And I hope this isn't the example. I'm just saying that right now. <laughs> I don't want this to be the example. Oh. Um, of where, like, if you were cutting... So say that you cut too much off of one end and you didn't measure it correctly on the cut, you might have like this much here and you would have a whole bunch of the blue left, but you have very little of the brown showing. Yeah, that's not fun. I've done it. Um, it's really frustrating. I actually did that. I've, so I've learned the hard way in quilting, just so you know. I've made all the mistakes, screwed up the quilts. Where'd this one, where's my other one at? Did I drop it? Oh, I did. Um, where I've actually cut, um, I've cut it wrong. Really, really wrong. And it throws the whole quilt off. And then you cry because you worked really hard and you screwed it up. So I've learned. 
uh, measure a bunch of times and cut once. You don't want to, you just, if you're not sure, you just want to make sure. And if you're not, go watch a video, walk away until you can figure it out in your head because you do not want to cut your stuff wrong. I wish I had some that I could show you. Maybe one day I'll just do a tutorial on how to, how to do that. <laughs> I'll teach you how to cut it the wrong way. <laughs> So you will never do it. Yep. And I hate it when people do tutorials and they don't show you. That's what frustrates me. Okay, I'm gonna turn the camera back up on me now. Okay, if you're dizzy. Because now I've got to talk again. Okay. All right. So that is one thing I will tell you that absolutely drives me insane is when you are trying to learn how to make something and somebody does not show you the entire process of how to do it. So like we're doing this sawtooth star quilt, right? Part of the process in making this quilt is squaring up these squares, right? Would you know how to do that if somebody didn't show you how to do it? I mean, would you would you know that? Or would you just trim off the dog ears and sew these together? Because I can tell you, I know a lot of people who would just sew this together like this. Okay, and they would use their quarter inch and then they'd go to put the three and a half inch square that goes on the edge <laughs> Thanks, Bert. <laughs> um, so if you did that, and it would be completely uneven. So then how do you square it up? So I guess that's kind of one of my pet peeves is when you're teaching somebody how to do something, you need to teach them how to do the whole process. And the whole process is trimming, squaring up. All of that stuff. Oh, thank you, Candy. Yeah, I mean, I get really frustrated with that too because, you know, I mean, I'm learning too. I'm always learning something new. And, you know, if I can't figure it out, how you went from point A to point C, <laughs> like, where's, what did I miss? So, yeah, that's, I mean, I get so frustrated with that. Um, zippers are like that for me. I have watched a lot of videos on zippers. I'm actually, I can actually do zippers now, but, um, it took me a long time to be able to do zippers. And it also took me a really long time to figure out how to do binding. Binding is one of those things that is very tricky. And I will say that even when I am making like my own binding, even when I cut as straight as I possibly can get it at the two and a half inches, and then I go to fold it and, and press it down, my binding always shifts. Yeah, binding's a pain in the rear, isn't it? Um, it always shifts. It's never perfect for me. And I've seen other quilters and sewers where they get it, and it's all nice and perfect. And I'm like, how did you do that? I've heard, use starch, do this, do that. Well, I'm going to be honest. I don't have time to sit there and do that. I just take my iron and I just press. You know what? Good enough for me, though. It works. I'm going to tell you a little trick about binding, though, that you're going to like. When you are binding, you can either use, okay, Candy, I'll see you later. Have a good night. Um, with binding, you can either... Um, yes, I still have to take my time too with it, Joyce. Um, you can either use bias tape that you can buy from the store and you can just put it, you could just fold it onto your, your blanket and you can, or quilt and you can just sew down. 
perfect, right? Works great. You can do that. Um, I prefer, I would recommend using a stitch in the ditch for, for that. Uh, also, for binding, you can use, what I prefer to do is I use actually, I'll either use a walking foot or I will use a stitch in the ditch foot. Now, when I use a walking foot, I put it like right, right at the very edge of where the, the binding is. So this would be like my little, my little raw edge there. It would be folded in, but it's the edge that needs to be tacked down. And I get it like right up there and I have a zigzag stitch. But I use the zigzag stitch that does more than just like the up and down. It has like, I think three stitches up, three stitches down, three stitches up, three stitches down. I prefer that stitch. Number one, it is a really nice decorative stitch. And number two, it adds character to the quilt and I love it and it holds it together really well and it doesn't I'm not putting my quilts in a quilt show so it doesn't have to be like perfect you know so I like that I like the stitching for that um, the other thing that I have found that really makes it nice um, oh I was gonna say about the stitch in the ditch foot if you want to sew a straight line and tack it down, get a stitch in the ditch foot and put it along that edge. You have to, you're going to have to clip your quilt with the quilt clips, but um, stitch in the ditch it. Just put that little black foot, that little line there and just go to town, boom. That'll stitch everything down perfectly. The other thing you can do after you quilt is you can actually go around and do like a a stay stitch, uh, what else is it called? It's not a binding stitch. What am I trying to say here? I know you guys know what I'm trying to talk about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It'll come to me. <laughs> Gosh. Uh, just go around the quilt and do like a stitch that, that stitches down the raw edges, okay? Anyway and then put your binding on and it'll it'll go on so much smoother so much smoother because you don't have all of that bulk that you're working with so yeah binding is a binding is a real nightmare it's a nightmare for me too i just but i've been doing it for so long now that i'm like yeah you know is what it is but boy is it a pain in the butt sometimes. I would imagine that most people probably, <laughs> probably feel that way, to be honest. I think we all have our, our little pet peeves about what we like to do and don't. What was that? You, your hospitals. Hold on. Oh, they did. Oh, so they want people to make homemade masks, right? killing me kids I know it's because of this stupid weather change too God it's insanity <laughs> You're not the worst, trust me. It takes practice. Binding binding actually takes a lot of practice. I remember when I first started, I would ask my mom, I'd be like, "How do you how do you get the binding on the blanket?" And she'd be like, "It takes practice." Yeah. 
And she would be like, it takes, it takes lots and lots of practice. And she'd be like, when am I ever going to get this? I, I don't think I really got binding until, I don't know, probably <laughs> in the last couple of years. <laughs> yeah, it's a pain in the butt. And sometimes I still completely miss the mark. I've made things where, like if I were to pull out some projects, you would probably be like, uh, okay, yeah. Sometimes you just completely miss the mark on it. You know what I really don't like is um, piecing backings. I think I hate that more than binding. I think I'd rather bind a quilt every day of the week. I just don't like piecing a binding together. And I, I know I've talked about this before, and that's why I buy the the bigger backing, just because I can't, I just, can't, there's something about piecing a backing, I hate it, and I hate the way it looks. Um, I've done it, I do it, but it's not my favorite thing to do. I feel like it's just so time consuming, and I don't have the patience for it. Although I will say, I did start working on another quilt I told you about that I was commissioned to do here and I'll show you what I did you guys will like this so don't mind all my little project boxes around here <laughs> I've only got five billion of them <laughs> um let me make sure that these are t together did I drop I dropped that again I think that these are like sticking to me like a felt board. Okay, just set those aside. Okay, so. Project boxes everywhere. So I was telling you I was working on this quilt that I got commissioned to do. And so I had to come up with the design. And I think I missed the mark, so. He wants something a little different, so I'm going to have to work on it some more, but I will show you what I made so far. So this is what I came up with. Okay. So that was one part of it. Here is another part of it. Um, and I don't need, and I'll be honest, I don't know if I'm going to be able to deliver on this. This might be above my skills. I, I just, I don't know if I can give him what he wants. And here's another one. Another piece that I just played with. This one. And this one, I don't even know. I would have to do something with this still. It was just kind of like, just kind of scrapped it. <laughs> These two neat little pieces that I sewed together. And then this piece. Thank you. Yeah. It was a lot of work. Um, so what I did was instead of throwing all these away, I thought of who? Karen Brown <laughs> and the after quilt. And I was like, you know, I'm going to put these in the after quilt of something. I don't know what, but it's going to go in something. It may go in the after quilt of this one, actually, because this is the backing fabric that I chose for this quilt. So it may go in the back of this one. So it'll be like a reversible quilt. I don't know, but I just couldn't. I was like, why would I throw this away? Normally, I would throw this in my scrap bin. I'm not kidding. I would put it in a scrap bin. And it would just get put in a bag and it would get donated. So this time I've decided, no, I'm going to keep it. And I'm going to use it. And I'm going to incorporate it somehow into a quilt because I am tired of wasting 
fabric. And if I have to make a pillow out of something, then I'll make a pillow with it. But here's more of the scraps. And then I have a lot of this fabric. A lot, a lot, a lot. More pieces that I cut out. As you can see, I just, I have stuff everywhere. So, it's one of my scrap boxes. Project boxes, I mean. <laughs> so many projects. So little time. You would think I would have all the time in the world right now, but I don't. So, anyhow. Well, guys, I think I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to call it a night tonight. Thank you, Joyce. And, um... Like I said, be on the lookout tomorrow because the new block of the month video will come out. That one will be pre-recorded. It won't be live. And um, if you are following along with the block of the month, I release one every first Friday of the month. We're going to be making 12 blocks. And at the end of the 12, we will put the quilt together and you will have a quilt, a sampler quilt. Um... If you want to see the block of the month, if you've missed any and you want to catch up, or if you're new and you're new to me and you want to do it, have a good night, Valerie. Thank you for joining me. You can go to my blog. It's craftyauthor.com. And if you click up at the top, it'll say block of the month. So you click on that and it'll show you all the block of the months that we've done so far. So it's pretty easy. So if you're looking for this project, you go to the blog tab. And if you're looking for block of the month, you go to the block of the month tab. So that is it for tonight, guys. I hope you have a wonderful evening. If I don't see you guys tomorrow evening, you have a wonderful weekend. And I will catch you guys on Monday. Have a good one. We'll see you. Bye-bye.